Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the Russian economy. The Wall Street Journal at the end of 2023 had a review of the year and identified what it saw as the winners of the year. And the people that it named as being the winners were Taylor Swift, Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin. And Vladimir Putin was proposed as a result of the successful evasion of all of the sanctions. Now, in direct response to this, the Yale School of Management, who've been closely following all of the companies that have exited from Russia since the start of the Ukraine war, came out and stated that they vehemently objected to the Wall Street Journal's proposal that Vladimir Putin had been one of the winners of 2023. And in direct contradiction, the Yale School of Management believes that 2023 has been a disaster for the Russian economy. And in today's video, we're going to go through the details as to why the Yale School of Management believe that 2023 was such a bad year from Russia's perspective. So we'll talk about exactly what's happened to the price of the key commodities that Russia is selling. And then we'll go through the seven specific factors that the Yale School of Management have identified as being a huge loss from Russia's perspective. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that supported the channel. If you've bought me a coffee, sent me a YouTube super thanks, or signed up as a member or a patron, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. The Yale School of Management is the graduate business school of Yale University issuing Master of Business Administrations or MBAs to its students. Admission requirements for the MBA include a four-year bachelor's degree from an accredited US institution or the international equivalent, completion of an online test, academic transcripts, two professional recommendations, completion of video questions, a behavioral assessment, and the payment of fees, which in the 2023-24 academic year totaled around $115,000, including living expenses and textbooks. Around 350 students enroll each year, and the average compensation for graduates is around $200,000 per annum. Yale is ranked by Poets and Quants in the top 10 over the past eight years, Jeffrey Sonnefield is currently the Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Studies at the Yale School of Management, as well as founder and president of the Chief Executive Leadership Institution, a non-profit educational and research institution focused on CEO leadership and corporate governance. Sonnefeld is a highly regarded academic, having had research articles published in over 100 leading academic journals in management, and he is a contributor for CNBC and a columnist for both Fortune and Time. Sonnefeld was recognised by Poets and Quants magazine as the 2022 Professor of the Year in recognition of his high-profile efforts to catalyse the historic exits from Russia of over 1,000 global businesses after the invasion of Ukraine. He has advised the White House, the US State Department, US Treasury Department and Council of Economic Advisers on Russian economic sanctions and business retreats and has testified to the US Congress. Stephen Tian is a research director at the Yale School of Management and assisted Sonnefeld with his research. One of the first things that was identified as being a huge negative factor on the Russian economy as a direct result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine is the impact on the commodity prices for things that Russia is exporting. This chart shows the movement in the price of Russian oil over the last five years. And if we focus in on February the 23rd, 2022, which was the day before Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine. The price of Russian oil at that point was trading for around $92 per barrel, which compares to the current price of around $62 per barrel. So one of the points that Sonnefeld has made is that the overall impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been negative for the Russian economy because it's driven down the price of Russian oil by around a third since the invasion started. But of course, the price of Russian oil isn't the only impact on the Russian economy because the sanctions that have been applied against Russia has led to a reduction in the volume of Russian oil being sold. If you follow the channel, you'll know that over the last 12 months, Russia has announced a number of production cuts amounting to around 850,000 barrels per day. So the overall negative impact on the Russian economy is actually greater because you've got the combination of a reduction in volume and a reduction in price. This chart shows the price of natural gas in Europe over the last five years. 
And once again, if we focus in on the 23rd of February, which was the day before Russia launched its invasion, the price of natural gas in Europe was around 98 euros per megawatt hour, compared to the current price of around 35 euros, which represents a fall in price of around two thirds. However, the impact on the Russian economy is far, far greater than just the movement in the price. Because as a direct result of the sanctions applied against Russia, most European countries are no longer buying Russian gas. And unfortunately, from Russia's perspective, the only other alternative to sending the gas through the pipelines that it constructed over the last 30 years is to liquefy the gas and send it on ships. However, Russia doesn't have the facilities to be able to do that. So the vast majority of the volume of gas that it was selling previously to Europe is sitting under the ground. Russia isn't extracting that gas because it doesn't have any way of transporting it to countries such as India and China. So obviously the two thirds fall in the market price of natural gas has hurt the Russian economy. But by far the bigger impact has been the massive reduction in volume that Russia is selling. This chart shows the market price of wheat over the last five years. And if we focus in on February the 23rd, the market price at that time was around $840 compared with $620 today. And that represents a fall of around 25%. So once again here, Sonnefeld's point is that the direct impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine was to drive down the price of one of its biggest commodities and therefore has had a negative impact on Russia's economy. And when you combine this with the fact that a lot of countries are no longer buying Russian wheat, it's had a double impact. The first issue identified by the Yale School of Management is the loss of talent. Immediately following the news that Russia had invaded Ukraine, it was estimated that around 500,000 people fled the country. Now, some of these people were foreign nationals who were working for corporates that had set up businesses within Russia. But the vast majority of them were Russians who decided that they no longer wanted to work under this regime. And they decided that they wanted to permanently leave Russia. And many of these individuals were highly educated, highly skilled, and therefore highly valuable to the Russian economy. So the impact of the loss of those first 500,000 people was actually disproportionately higher. But unfortunately, from Russia's point of view, the exodus didn't stop there. Because in August 2022, Vladimir Putin announced that he was launching the first mobilization of troops since World War II. And it was announced that 300,000 men would be conscripted to go and fight in Ukraine. And the impact of that announcement was that around 700,000 people decided that that was just too big a risk to take and that they wanted to leave the country as well. And we saw the video footage at the time of queues of cars literally trying to leave the country simultaneously. And the Yale School of Management have identified this loss of talent as being hugely damaging to the Russian economy because it's not just the loss of manpower when you look at the quality of people who have left Russia, it's the higher end of the job spectrum, the more skilled, the more talented, which are firstly more difficult to replace, but secondly, their impact in terms of productivity, efficiency and profitability for Russian companies is far greater and it will be very difficult for Russia to be able to replace those people internally and Russia currently isn't a very attractive proposition for foreign nationals to move to. The next issue identified by the Yale School of Management is the loss of private capital. In order for an economy to grow, you need the companies within it to be expanding, to be investing money into their businesses to grow more jobs and to grow more profit and therefore to grow the economy. But unfortunately, from Russia's point of view, the announcement of the invasion of Ukraine led to the opposite. It led to the loss of capital, money being pulled out of the country. And it's estimated by the Yale School of Management that over $250 billion was lost from the Russian economy between February 20 and June 23. And the private capital that was taken out of the Russian economy in 2023 equated to 13% of Russia's total GDP, which was more than the global financial crisis and also the loss of capital experienced by Russia in 2014 when it annexed Crimea. 
And the problem with the loss of private capital is that the only other way of injecting money into the economy is from the state. And as we've talked about in many videos before, the problem that Russia has right now is that it has a finite amount of capital. Its national wealth fund is being used to fund losses in the economy. So it isn't really in a position to be able to start investing into private entities and businesses in Russia. So this money is simply not appearing in the Russian economy. The next issue is the loss of Western technology and expertise. And this is an issue that we've discussed at length on the channel. Immediately following the invasion of Ukraine, big oil and gas companies such as BP, Shell and ExxonMobil all announced that they were exiting from Russia. They were no longer prepared to put any money into the country. But not just that, they decided to close their operations and to pull all of their people out of Russia and all of their facilities. And the problem that that poses for Russia is twofold. Firstly, they've got sanctions against them in terms of the individual technology. So microchips, AI, all of that sort of thing that is working currently in all of those facilities that were designed, built and developed by these overseas multinationals. But secondly, it's the expertise and the technical know-how and the combination of loss of access to the physical equipment loss of access to the software and also the loss of the knowledge and the understanding as to how these things work has potentially catastrophic implications for the Russian oil and gas industry because many of the facilities that Russia is operating are in very cold climates. So they're operating in Arctic conditions where things can go wrong really quickly and unless you have the right people with the right equipment who know what they're doing to be able to sort out those problems it could lead to really big issues for the Russian oil and gas industry and potentially could lead to close down of some of these facilities. And the Yale management paper states that Rosneft alone had to spend nearly $10 billion more on capital expenditure over the last year, which amounts to roughly $10 of additional expenses for every barrel of oil exported. The next issue that the Yale School of Management have identified is the complete halt of all foreign investment. Now, in any economy, you constantly need investment and development. You need to keep moving forward to keep up with the times. Whatever the latest developments are, you need to be at that cutting edge if you want to be a leading economy. And Russia considers itself to be one of the biggest economies in the world and therefore needs its businesses and its people to be at that cutting edge. But in order to be there, you need huge amounts of capital because in order to be developing things like artificial intelligence, electric vehicles and technology, you need to have a huge amount of research and development and an army of people working on things to be able to be the best in the world. And the problem that Russia has right now is that firstly, it lost a lot of those people, so it doesn't have all of that expertise. But the biggest problem that's holding Russia back today is the lack of capital. Following the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991, Russia opened up its doors and invited in the West. And huge companies came in with huge amounts of cash and built facilities for Russia all over its huge land. But as we've just discussed, as a direct result of the war in Ukraine, those companies have now all left. And the problem that Russia has is that going forward, they don't have any partners to be able to team up with who can fund all of the research, development, production and engineering that it needs to stay up with the rest of the world. Now, since the invasion of Ukraine started, Russia has become much closer with India and China. But that's mostly a trading relationship. Both of those countries want to buy commodities from Russia. They're buying oil and other items. What they're not looking to do is invest directly into Russia for Russia's benefit. That's what's been happening historically from the West. That's not happening anymore. And the problem that Russia has is that it doesn't have anybody that wants to give it large amounts of cash to keep up with the rest of the world. The next issue identified by the Yale School of Management is the fact that the ruble is no longer a freely exchangeable and convertible currency. Whenever I post a video talking about the fact that the Russian ruble has fallen in value significantly over the last 12 months, I always receive lots of comments in the section below from people saying the ruble's doing really well. What are you talking about? It's stabilized. It's actually one of the strongest currencies in the world. Words to that effect. And if we have a quick look at what's happened to the value of the ruble since the 
start of the war in Ukraine. You can see that in the week leading up to the invasion of Ukraine, one US dollar was trading for around 82 Russian rubles. However, immediately following the invasion, the value of the ruble crashed to around 125 to one US dollar. We then saw an incredible bounce back where one US dollar was trading for 50 Russian rubles by the end of June. However, between June 22 and October 23, the value of the ruble crashed and at one point, one US dollar was trading for more than 100 rubles, which proved to be too much for President Putin, and he introduced a variety of capital controls to bring the value of the ruble back down. And it's these capital controls that the Yale School of Management have identified as being damaging for the Russian economy. Because where we've got to today is that the market for Russian rubles is so small that nobody wants to accept it as a form of payment. The only country in the world who wants to take rubles as payment is Russia. Russia is now doing a lot of its business with India and China. That's who it's selling the majority of its oil to. And initially, Russia asked for payments to be made in rubles. However, both of those countries have refused and they are paying in their own currency. So as a direct result of that, Russia is now building up large quantities of Indian rupees and Chinese yuan as it's being paid in those currencies for all of the oil that it's selling. But it's not benefiting the Russian ruble. And essentially, the Russian ruble is now becoming a bit of a dead currency. Nobody wants to use it apart from Russia. And the long-term implication of that could be hugely damaging on the Russian economy. The penultimate issue identified by the Yale School of Management is the loss of access to the international capital markets. One of the reasons why the international capital markets are so important is that it supplies a virtual unlimited amount of capital. If you've got a strong credit offering, whether it be a government-backed bond or a corporate bond or even a corporate equity issue, the best place to raise that capital is internationally because there will always be investors for a strong credit opportunity. And going to the international markets means that you can even do that during a recession in your home country. And the other reason why the international capital markets are important is that you will usually get the best price by going to those markets. But obviously, Russia has now lost access to the worldwide market for investors. Firstly, there are a lot of sanctions applied directly against Russia. So Russia has lost access to those markets. But also, as a result of what's happened, with a lot of countries having their assets seized and no longer being able to have ownership, a lot of other countries who maybe aren't directly sanctioning Russia are now very cautious about putting money into the Russian economy because they don't know long term whether or not they will still have access and ownership because there is now a genuine risk that Russia could just rewrite the rule book, change the laws and seize all of those assets. The final issue identified by the Yale School of Management is the massive destruction of wealth and the plummeting value of businesses in Russia. And in its report, it claims that some state-owned businesses have seen a 75% fall in the value of their companies since the invasion of Ukraine started. And the reduction in wealth and the valuation of companies does become a bit of a circular argument. Because if you're holding shares in Russian companies and the value falls by 50%, then by definition, your net worth has fallen as well because some of your money is invested into those shares and therefore you're less inclined to invest into more companies so it becomes difficult for those companies to be able to raise capital within Russia and as we've just discussed as these companies no longer have access to the international capital markets they really don't have anywhere else to go and ultimately what's happening in Russia right now is that the state has become the go-to place for any form of investment or or lending because it's difficult to be able to do that internationally and because people's wealth and the value of companies has fallen individuals aren't interested in putting the money forward so everything relies upon the state and the national wealth fund so what's the summary and conclusion today well i wanted to post this video because firstly the wall street journal has identified president putin as being one of the winners of 2023 they think that Russia is doing very well. And in direct response to that, the Yale School of Management have come out and said that they believe it's the entire opposite situation. They don't see President Putin as being one of the winners and that the Russian economy has been severely damaged by the war in Ukraine. And this topic is one of the biggest debates. Whenever I post a video about the Russian economy, I'm always inundated with comments from people saying, 
You're talking nonsense. Russia is actually doing better now than before the war started. It's the West that are suffering as a result of the sanctions. And in today's video, we've been through some of the details that the Yale School of Management have identified as proving that the Russian economy has been damaged as a result of the war. Now, the first issue that they raised was what's happened to commodity prices. And as we saw from the data earlier, the price of oil and gas and wheat is now lower than before the war started. And as Russia is a major exporter of all of these products, that's obviously had a negative impact. Now, one of the reasons why the price has fallen is because of the global slowdown. So it's not all because of the war in Ukraine. But from Russia's point of view, a global slowdown means that there's less demand and so the price falls. But also, because of the sanctions, Russia is experiencing a reduction in volumes because a lot of countries that were previously buying no longer want to buy Russian products. And the reason that those countries don't want to buy Russian products is because of the sanctions. So the war has definitely had a direct impact on Russia's trade and it has been negative. Now, in terms of the other issues that the Yale School of Management identified, they firstly pointed out that over 1 million employees have left Russia as a direct result of the invasion. And that has definitely had a damaging impact on Russia's economy, not just in the short term, but in the longer term, because a lot of those people were higher educated, higher skilled, senior management, people with a lot of expertise and knowledge that you build up over a long period of time. And it's very difficult to be able to replace those people. And there is absolutely no doubt that the loss of those employees has had a damaging impact on Russia. And Russia currently isn't a country that a lot of people want to emigrate to. So they can't just bring in a lot of people from other countries to replace the million that they've lost. So long term, the loss of skilled workers does have the potential to have a really big negative impact on Russia. And alongside that, the loss of access to IT and equipment from overseas companies also has the potential to have a massive impact, particularly on the oil and gas industry, which is highly dependent on cutting edge technology and expertise. And because a lot of the oil majors have walked away from their investments in Russia, Russia is now having to run all of those facilities itself. And if it experiences problems and really big issues, there is a genuine possibility that the Russians on site won't have the knowledge or the expertise or the equipment to be able to fix those problems. And that could have really catastrophic implications for some of those facilities. The next issue that the Yale School of Management identified is the loss of capital. And this is capital that was previously invested into Russia future capital, so new investments, and also access to the capital markets. So this is having a triple whammy on the Russian economy because Russia desperately needs more cash. It needs to keep investing into its economy to keep growing. But where it's going to get that capital from is a big question because the West will definitely not put any more money into Russia. And India and China, who are its two main trading partners today, are not looking keen to actually invest into Russian-based businesses. They're happy to buy products from Russia, so they'll take oil and other commodities because it's cheaper than buying from other countries, but they want to look after their own countries. Both of those countries have a population of around 1.4 billion. So they're looking to create employment and income in their own countries, not in Russia. So Russia is now really isolated from a capital perspective. And in the long term, that will have a hugely damaging impact on the Russian economy because it will start losing pace compared with the other countries around the world. And once you get into that position, it's really difficult to ever catch up again. And the final issue that the Yale School of Management identified was the damaging impact on the Russian ruble. And this is as a result of the fact that Russia has implemented all of these capital controls to try to control what's happening with the exchange rate of the ruble. But the knock-on implication of that is that nobody wants to deal with the ruble. So India and China don't want to do deals in rubles. They don't want to take payments or make payments in rubles. They want to be doing it in their own currency. And Russia didn't really 
really have much option but to agree to that because it needed the volume sales to both of those countries. And as a result of that, there are very few countries in the world that are now trading in rubles. Russia is really the only country that's focused on the ruble. And in the long term, that will have a hugely damaging impact on the Russian economy because it's got a currency that nobody else wants. And ultimately, its people will suffer because prices will start going up as the exchange rate to the ruble starts to move. And that has the potential to drive up inflation, which means that interest rates will need to go up and that will have a negative impact on demand and ultimately on GDP in Russia. So the overall summary of today's video is that the Yale School of Management, in direct contradiction to the Wall Street Journal, believe that the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been hugely damaging on the Russian economy and that the Russian economy is doing very badly and therefore President Putin has been one of the losers of 2023 rather than the winners. Now hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end and here's something to put a smile on your face.